Well, hey guys, I have a new retinol update for you. New science that has come out about a certain retinol that you may be interested in. But before we get into the video, make sure you are subscribed, hit the bell notification. If you like skincare content from a dermatologist, that little bell notification will let you know when my videos go live. Unless you've been sleeping under a rock, you've probably heard about retinoids. I have a ton of videos on them, and it is widely established that retinoids are a topical skincare ingredient that can go to work to improve the visible signs of skin aging, especially those that are caused by UV exposure, fine lines, mottled pigmentation. Now, retinoid is sort of an umbrella term for a few different types of retinoids of different generations. We're not gonna delve into all that in this video. For simplicity's sake, when I say retinoid, we are talking about the golden child, tretinoin, retinoic acid, kind of the gold standard when we're talking about topical retinoids that have been shown and have a lot of data behind them for improving the visible signs of skin aging. But there's an issue. If you've ever used topical tretinoin, you know it can be pretty irritating. And for some patients, they simply do not tolerate it. And therefore, it's just not a good option for them. It can be very drying and irritating. A lot of people get used to that. It goes away after a few weeks. But for some people, they just never get over that hurdle. So there's a lot of interest in retinoid precursor ingredients. Here in comes the ingredient retinol. Now, retinol, unlike Tretinoin is something you can buy in the store. There are a dime a dozen. There are thousands of retinol products, creams, serums. What is retinol? Retinol is a precursor of the active form of retinoid or tretinoin. Basically, it undergoes serial conversion in the skin to retinoic acid, the active form, which is what tretinoin is. So your skin has to do some work on it, ends up being a lot less irritating than tretinoin. But there is some evidence that retinol can serve as a, an alternative to retinoic acid or tretinoin for improving the visible signs of skin aging. And I've got videos on this channel going over my top retinol recommendations. So make sure you check those out. But as with any cosmetic ingredient, we are always kind of left to the mercy of the manufacturer. There aren't a lot of studies on over-the-counter cosmetic products to say which ones really are the best. It's got to be something that not only has biologic plausibility for efficacy, but you actually have to show that it gets into the skin and triggers the cascade of events that leads to the objective. And in this case, it's gonna be improvement of fine lines and wrinkles. Unfortunately, because retinol is a cosmetic ingredient, manufacturers, they don't have to demonstrate any of this. So when people ask me, what are the best retinols? I try and go with those that at least have some literature, but it's often very hard to come across literature backing these up. But We've got a new paper out that actually takes a look at an over-the-counter retinol product and compares it to the golden child tretinoin. This is a paper that came out this month in JAMA Dermatology. Now, JAMA Dermatology is a journal that publishes dermatology research and papers. But one thing about JAMA Dermatology is it's actually one of the most influential dermatology journals. It has a high impact factor. They're pretty strict about the quality of papers that they accept and subsequently publish. This paper was an exploratory randomized control trial comparing the efficacy of a retinol with uh, tretinoin, uh, Renova, you've probably heard of, it contains 0.02% tretinoin. What I like about this study is not only are they comparing in a blinded fashion, meaning the subjects don't know what product they're getting and the clinicians doing the measurements don't know who got what. But what I also like is not only is this looking at how much they're wrinkles improved just looking at the skin but this paper they actually took skin biopsies and later did some analysis to confirm that biomarkers were activated that suggest that the retinol in the product is actually getting into the skin and doing what it's supposed to do this study was very small it was conducted at a major institution in baltimore maryland and they aimed to enroll patients uh, over the age of 35 they excluded patients who had been on a uh, retinoid by mouth, like a Accutane, in six months leading up to the study, 
or patients who had been using a topical retinol or retinoid or salicylic acid or lactic acid or a polyhydroxy acid any time in the three months leading up to the study. If you'd used one of those, you couldn't be in it because those ingredients, they have some anti-aging benefits, obviously. They really tried very hard to get patients of all phototypes, but at the end, it really ended up only getting patients who are skin phototypes one through three. So basically Caucasian. They measured improvement in terms of the signs of skin aging at baseline and then at four weeks, 12 weeks, 18 weeks, and 24 weeks. They took both digital photographs and they did in-person evaluation. Not only are they looking for degrees of photo damage, but they're also looking for signs of irritation, including redness, swelling, dryness, peeling. At those time points, they also asked the patients about their subjective feelings about the product, did they think it was working? And they also measured adverse effects at these time points. Now, as far as the skin biopsies, they took a biopsy at the very start of the study before anybody had started any topicals, and then they repeated the biopsy at the end of the study, which was at 24 weeks or six months. At the end of the study, there was no statistically significant difference between tretinoin and the retinol product. But not surprising, those who received tretinoin showed redness six times more frequently than those who received the retinol product, meaning the retinoid was more likely to be causing redness for the people in the study in comparison to the retinol. And again, that, that's not necessarily surprising. However, other signs of skin irritation were no different between the two groups. Keep in mind the participants have no idea what they're getting. They don't know if they're getting tretinoin, Renova, or if they're getting the retinol product. At the end of the study, 89% of those who got the retinol said they would keep using it whereas 73% of those who got tretinoin said they would happily continue using it. So that's not a huge difference between the two, but importantly, the biopsies that were taken, they then looked at biomarkers of retinoid activity, and they showed that both the retinol and tretinoin showed evidence of activation of one of, one of the main markers that is a clue that the pathways are being activated, and that is expression of something called CRAB bp 2 uh, That is a clue that the retinoid receptor is engaged and that the ingredient obviously got into the skin and is doing what it's supposed to do. Basically, both are functionally activating the retinoid receptor signaling that later on is going to presumably lead to skin benefit, which as a reminder, they did show improvements between the two groups that were comparable in terms of improving fine lines and the skin signs of photo damage. Now, one of the goals of using a topical retinoid is it's, it's been shown to improve collagen synthesis. That's thought to be why you get an improvement in wrinkle smoothing. And interestingly, neither group really showed much of an improvement in type one collagen synthesis. Now, there are enzymes that get activated to chew up your collagen, like when you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation. They're called matrix metalloproteinases. There are a variety of different types of them. They're numbered. And um, they looked at a few different types of matrix metalloproteinases. They showed that the retinoid or tretinoin suppressed matrix metalloproteinase nine activity, whereas the retinol did not. Interestingly, retinol uh, suppressed the expression of matrix metalloproteinase 2, which is known to chew up a different type of collagen. Specifically, it's known to chew up a type of collagen called type 4 collagen, which is right at the junction between the epidermis, the top part of the skin, and the dermis. And what also was interesting was that the degree of suppression of matrix metalloproteinase 2 activity was actually correlated with the degree of clinical improvement in the retinol group, kind of suggesting that it's suppression of this enzyme that leads to wrinkle smoothing, at least in those getting a retinol. Something that has always been appreciated clinically, think of it as a clinical anecdote, is that people who have more severe wrinkling at baseline before starting tretinoin or retinol, they tend to have a more striking response. They get better wrinkle smoothing provided they tolerate it. This study actually showed that. Those people in the study who had more prominent fine lines at baseline, they got the best results from either uh, retinoid or retinol. So at the end of the day, this study shows that both retinol and tretinoin can improve the visible signs of sun damage to the same extent 
and there are biomarkers showing that both retinol and retinoid actually get in the skin, activate these markers to show that they're doing their thing. And those whose wrinkle severity is greatest at baseline are going to have the most striking improvement compared to those who maybe just have mild to moderate wrinkle severity. Now, at the beginning of this video, I explained to you all, or reminded you all that retinol has to be converted to the active form retinoic acid in your skin. It's a two-step process. Not everyone's skin is going to make that conversion to the same extent. And so one person may be more efficient at that conversion and they may get better results from a retinol, whereas other people may not you know, be as efficient. Maybe they see better results with tretinoin or retinoic acid, which is already in that active form. That being said, the retinol product that they use in the study had 1.1% retinol. So let's say for example, you are really, really good. Your skin like just converts all that over to retinoic acid that's gonna be 1.1% retinoic acid. In contrast, the actual retinoic acid product that they use, that they compared it to, uh, Renova, has 0.02%. So in other words, the uh, retinoic acid equivalents are technically possibly greater in the retinol product in comparison to the prescription product. So that, that may explain some of the discrepancy. So I mentioned already that I really liked that this study, not only was it randomized, controlled, and blinded, but I also like the fact that they actually took biopsies and confirmed that the biomarkers of retinoid activity are in fact there. But some of the limitations are that it's very, very small and that they did not control for the vehicle uh, meaning the other stuff in the product besides the retinol, they didn't compare the vehicle effects. And that's important because Renova um, does not have the same other stuff in it as the retinol product that they used in the study. All of these things could explain the fact that the retinol caused less redness in that group. Interestingly they, though, the other signs of skin irritation were not strikingly different between the two groups. Another major limitation, aside from it being small, is that while they tried to enroll all skin types, they only got skin types one through three. So they didn't get any, any patients who were skin of color. So they're basically just evaluating clinical improvement in Caucasian skin and therefore how generalizable these results in this very small study are to skin of color, which reacts very differently to UV, uh, to sun, in terms of you know, hyperpigmentation is much different. So to what extent these results are generalizable to the populations with skin of color, you know, you can't, you can't really say that. I've been holding out on this for a while because I didn't want to blur your vision too much, but what the heck is the retinol product that they're using? Sometimes they don't disclose, but in this paper they actually did. And it is from Skin Medica. <clears throat> the advantage of using a retinol is that you don't have to go in and get a prescription and have it filled. If you are using a topical retinoid for anti-aging purposes, insurance is not going to cover that. Unless you're using tretinoin for acne or a medical condition, insurance is not gonna cover it. So you are gonna be paying out of pocket regardless. The Skin Medica product costs about $80 and you don't have to you know, check in with your derm to have it refilled. You can buy it online on their website. Now, of course, many dermatology offices distribute it, sell it in their office. Here's something I need to point out that many people will have issue with, and that is this study was funded by Skin Medica. And anytime there's a funding source, it calls into question, is there potential bias? Um, in this case, it's definitely worth considering that as a potential source of bias. However, Skin Medica uh, was not involved in the study design, the d collection of the data, the evaluation of the data, and this paper was published in a pretty top tier dermatology journal. And in order for it to be published, it had to undergo peer review. So other you know, dermatologists had to critique the science. And it's not as though the funding source is going to influence the mRNA results that told you that the biomarkers were activated. Still worth pointing out, but I wouldn't chalk it all up to, oh, this was funded by Skin Medica, so it's, you know, there goes this credibility. 
Um, I think it has much less of an impact than you might actually think. It's not like if you went to Skin Medica's website and they showed you a paper saying, in our clinical studies, 90% of participants had an improvement in wrinkles and fine lines in you know six weeks or whatever. Um, it's not it's not the same as that. This is a more rigorous way and a more unbiased way of evaluating the the product and it compares it to the standard of care, tretinoin. They're taking biopsies, they're doing molecular analysis, and it's being peer reviewed by an outside source. It's randomized um, and there's blinding that goes on. So there's a lot more complexity to the way the study was done than just a plain industry study where you do have to question to what extent the results are you know, perhaps being influenced or the study design is influenced by the, fun by the, the source of funding. All right, y'all, so that is the new update. Basically, this is a paper in a very credible journal in dermatology showing the efficacy of an over-the-counter retinol comparable to prescription tretinoin for the improvement of the visible signs of skin aging. This is a product that if you had asked me prior to the study what I recommended, I would say, well, there's nothing about it that makes me think it is any more convincing than the retinols I typically recommend. But now that we have this paper, at least showing that it gets into the skin, it activates the markers of retinoid activity, and there's clinical improvement in the visible signs of photo aging, I can actually recommend this product as a, as a retinol. So Skin Medica, you know, it's one of those that markets itself as medical grade. But in this case, at least with their retinol, there is now a pretty good paper demonstrating efficacy of their retinol. So I feel pretty confident that if you chose that, you would at least be getting the benefits of a retinol. And according to, you know, per this study, although it's got its limitations, which we mentioned, it does appear to yield results. I will point out though, a lot of the reason why people pursue retinol is that tretinoin can be pretty irritating. And to what extent this is gonna be less irritating for you in comparison to tretinoin, I'm not completely convinced because the only, the only difference was less redness in the Skin Medica group. Dryness, peeling, that sort of thing, they were comparable between the two. Anyways, you guys, let me know in the comments if you've ever tried the Skin Medica retinol, if you're using it currently. Uh, what do you think about it? I hope the study and sharing it with you was informative. On the end slate, I'm going to put a recent video where I review the uh, Skin Better Science Alpha Ret product. So check that out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.